Welcome to episode three, and this episode is going to be the longest of the ten in this series because it's covering a very important structure when it comes to cell division, and that's the chromosomes. The chromosomes are little coiled up packets of DNA that are easier for the cell to move around during the division process. So we're going to go over the chromosome structure, and we're going to spend a probably a little bit over 10 minutes on this episode because it's really important. So you want to make sure you get this one down. Now, if you are a regular uh, viewer of my series and if you're one of my students, we went over this a little bit in chapter 12 because I knew this was going to be one of the most important things in chapter 10. And so a lot of this stuff should come to mind because you've already had it. All right. Now, when we get to eukaryotic cell division, remember there's, there's kind of just some basic steps when it comes to cell division. Number one, is you've got to replicate your DNA, and then number two, you've got to split in half. Now, when it comes to a eukaryote, though, the process of splitting in half is a little bit more difficult. And as you can see on your screen here, these are the two basic parts of when it comes to dividing in half for a eukaryote. Now, first step is you have mitosis. Mitosis is simply the division of the nucleus. So let's write that down in here. All right, This is division of the nucleus. Okay, now you may notice that it exactly says that right underneath there, but if you've already written it down twice, that'll help it stick in your brain. Okay, we need to make sure that each daughter cell has a complete set of nuclear material so it can carry out all the processes for life. Now, there's four phases. You remember these as PMAT, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. We will have separate screencasts on each of those topics. And then the second part, which would be like fission for prokaryotic cells, is called cytokinesis. Uh, the prefix cyto means cell, and kinesis means to move. Basically, the cell moves and splits in half. That's kind of what this word means. So that's the actual division of the cell, and we're going to cover the details of that in another screencast. So let's start learning about these chromosomes that have to move around during mitosis. Okay, what is a chromosome? A chromosome is coiled up pieces of DNA. Now I want to go back and I want to review stuff for you. Okay, remember this stuff called chromatin? Chromatin is DNA wrapped around a protein called histone. So we're going to say wrapped around histone. Now remember, if I'm writing it down, you are definitely writing it down. Okay? Now, you take this chromatin and you coil it up real tight, that's going to be a chromosome. Now, in the human genome, we have 3 billion base pairs. So think of a ladder that's got 3 billion rungs or 3 billion steps. Now, that's too big of a ladder to carry around. So it's been chopped up into smaller ladders. And for humans, that would be 46 different chromosomes. So in other words, these 3 billion base pairs Instead of being one great big long ladder, it's chopped up into 46 smaller ones, which are easier to move around. All right, let's clear that out. All right, now what we have here on this graphic is really just some trivia information, but I really wanted to drive home to you that the number of chromosomes you have does not determine the amount of DNA that you have. I really want you to pay attention right here with the number of chromosomes in Canis familiaris, the family dog, all right? Uh, your dog has 78 chromosomes. Does that mean your dog has more DNA than you do? No. It simply means that its DNA has been chopped up into 78 different pieces. Okay, here's some other ones that have more than humans. Here you go, a potato, like mashed potatoes. Does a potato really have more DNA than do you? than you do? No. Simply it's been chopped up into 48 different pieces. Okay? All right. This is a picture that we had on an earlier screencast back in chapter 12 when we were talking about how DNA does its stuff. And I want to revisit it here because it shows you how all the DNA gets coiled up to form a chromosome. All right. So let's use blue for this one. All right. Here's your DNA double helix. Remember, sugar phosphate backbone with the DNA base pairs in between. Okay, here we've got the little beads on the string. These are called a nucleosome. Remember, a nucleosome has two loops of DNA around one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and the eighth one is back here. Uh, 
they're going to have eight histone molecules in a nucleosome. All right, now you take these nucleosomes, you coil them up even more, those form coils. You take your coils, coil them up even more, those are called supercoils. I know, very creative, huh? And then these supercoils are compacted and coiled up even more into what is called your chromosome. Now, we're going to call this one here a replicated chromosome because it's already gone through DNA replication. And so, like, this part of the X, that's one copy, and this part of the X is another copy. So we have two copies of the same chromosome. All right, a couple of things I want to let you know. Each side of the X is called a chromatid. And then this little blue spot right in there that holds the two chromatids together, that is called a centromere. We're going to go over this in a little bit more detail in just a little bit in this episode, but I just I want to kind of prime your brain for it. All right, uh, this is something we've had before, so if you're one of my students, you know, this should ring a bell. And if you're watching on YouTube, if you've seen my other episode, you've probably seen it again. All right, so nothing particularly new there. Let's move on. Okay, so let's look at that X shape proper, okay? And I want to add to this, I'm going to call this, once again, a replicated chromosome, which means it's gone through DNA replication. Um, this side's one copy, this side's the other copy, all right? It has its X shape, and each X, remember right here's one half the X, there's the other half. These are called sister chromatids. They're sisters because they're clones. They're exactly the same. Okay, they're held together by a centromere. The centromere is this region right here, and it's basically protein Velcro. It allows the sister chromatids to stick together, just like you would see on, on Velcro. Okay, now the outside part, I'm going to pick a new color for this. Let's go with blue. This area right in here, this little blue disc, this is called a kinetochore. So think of centromeres are on the inside, kinetochores are on the outside. All right? Now these kinetochores are going to have these microtubules connected to it. Think of them kind of like handles. So during cell division, something's going to grab onto these handles and it's going to tear the Velcro apart. So that one sister chromatid goes to one daughter cell, another sister chromatid goes to the other daughter cells. Okay? So once again, remember, half the X is called a chromatid. Chromatids are held together by centromeres. Kinetochores are on the outside, and they're going to be used to split apart the centromere at a later, later point in the process. Now, I saved this for last in this episode because science has just made this way too confusing. For no reason, then somebody just wanted to make it confusing and mission accomplished, okay? You need to learn a bunch of chroma words. You have chromatin, chromosome, and chromatid. They all sound the same because they're all actually the same stuff. They just get different names at different points. So let me explain this to you. I want you to focus over here on this picture to the left. All right, let's use green again. Okay, this right here is a single chromosome. This chromosome is going to go through du uh, duplication. Remember, that should be said replication. So you're going through DNA replication. Now, this chromosome made a copy of itself, and these copies are joined together. So you can't call each copy a chromosome. They're called chromatids. So right, I'm going to put that little dash right there. Remember this part right here? That's a centromere. Remember the little protein Velcro that holds together the chromatids. Now, during cell division, these chromatids or this centromere is going to rip apart. So just imagine you're ripping Velcro apart. The moment you rip that centromere, you cannot call the chromatids chromatids anymore. They go back to being called chromosomes. So you just can't call them a chromatid. They're now called a chromosome. Now, if you'll notice, see how these things all look the same? 
because they're exactly the same stuff. They just get a different name at different times. So chromatin is coiled, or let me rephrase this one. Chromatin is long and thin. It's the DNA wrapped around um, histones, and it will coil up to form a chromosome. So think of chromosome as coiled chromatin. Okay, now replicated chromosomes, and this is chromosomes that are in that X shape, half the X is called a chromatid. Now, when the chromatids separate, they're not called chromatids anymore, they're called chromosomes. All right, I'm going to stop there because the more you talk about this stuff, the more it gets confusing, okay? Really make sure that if you can understand this graphic, you're going to know what's happening. And remember, they all get different names at different times, even though they're all the exact same stuff. Okay, this should be about our longest episode from this uh, series of 10 videos. So until next time, we're going to catch you on the flip side.